Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. We have some very interesting things going on. Just got back uh, back home, and uh, it's been a very interesting trip over in Rome. I'm sure I've made quite a few of the people in the Vatican City happy with our presence. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we are kicking off in Israel. The official Independence Day celebration started this evening at 8 p.m., uh, a lot of festivities going on in Israel for the 67 years of independence. Uh, uh, it's kind of interesting because it's also, uh, you make, make sure think of the 1967 war there. Uh, you can find more information about this on Israel, Israel's national news there. They'll be covering the different uh, special events that are going on in Israel regarding that. Uh, but I wanted to take you right into some very serious news that, that we're seeing that is going on um, in Eastern Europe, and we follow this especially on satellite uh, television in the different languages there. Uh, the Czech language uh, news source was reporting that Russia, this is on regular Czech television news, I forget which channel that is, my wife actually caught this one here, said that Russia intends to invade uh, Ukraine this coming May. Now we had seen another report on that from the United States a little while back, that they were expecting that. And uh, whether or not this is true or not, really not sure. I can see the plausibility of it because that's what I'm going to do is share some articles with you from TASS Russian News Agency as well as the Moscow Times um, that would suggest one of the reasons why they would do it. Now, we do realize that Russia is dealing uh, with a situation that in order to protect the East Ukrainian Russian-speaking people, they better do something to step in there or the Western Ukraines, which are the Nazi propagandists that, uh, that um, the United States is backing, is going to try to crush and kill every one of the Russian people there. And also the, the, the Ukraine government has been threatening to take Crimea back, and NATO is backing uh, this regime that's in there. And so it has really brought a lot of tensions throughout Ukraine. Uh, but anyway, it says here on... Um, on uh, TASS uh, news agency, Moscow commits comments on Ukraine officials' dirty bomb statements. Now, this article was very interesting, and I wanted to share this with you. It says here that creation of a dirty bomb that incorporates uh, fissionable materials will turn Ukraine into a rogue state. The Russian foreign ministry said in a comment on Wednesday in connection with the declaration made earlier by Secretary of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, his name is Oleksnar Turkonoya, excuse me, Turkyanov. He's the one that actually made this comment. He says, we would like to hope such programs exist. Or excuse me, this is where the Russians are, are saying this. We would like to hope such programs exist only. And Mr. Turk, uh, Turk uh, Yanov's inflamed mentality. The com commentary said, he obviously falls short of realizing the aftermaths of implementation of such ideas. Because he said that he that Ukraines were going to do this. Uh, he said the manufacturing of devices of this kind would turn Ukraine into a rogue state and would bring up the application of provisions of Chapter 7 of the UN Charter to it. The ministry said uh, Turk, Nayo, Turk uh, Yanov told reporters on April 9th, Ukraine authorities were allegedly uh, bracing themselves for implementation of a number of unspecified confidential nuclear programs uh, to create either nuclear weapons or a dirty bomb. Now, this is what uh, Turkmenov is saying, which is a device for dispersal of low radiation materials with the aid of conventional explosives, thus contaminating territory and forcing all the civilians to flee it. So the secretary of Ukraine's National Security and Defense wants to actually radiate with a nuclear device eastern Ukraines to be able to wipe them off. Now, the Russian people have actually picked up on a telephone conversation with one of the other uh, top officials in Russia stating the exact same thing. We should just take a nuclear bomb and wipe all the Russian Ukraines completely off of the face of the map. So, this is absurd that the United States would even consider 
working with a rogue government that has toppled a democratic government in the first place and then turn around and place sanctions on Russia as if Russia was the bad guy in the first place. It is hypocrisy in a, in a world that is supposed to be, uh, that stands for freedom and democracy. Does the United States really stand for freedom and democracy? Or is there something else pulling at their strings, making them do the wars and topple the governments that they topple? Anyway, it goes on to say, more often than not, such plans are revealed by terrorist groups of every description, and we would actually like to hope such programs exist only in Mr. Turkneyov's inflamed mentality, as he in all probability is unaware of the consequences of the implementation of these ideas might entail, the commentary said. That's according to the Russian news agency there. And I think he's very well aware of what it would do. But when Russia is dealing with such threats like this, no doubt Russia may very well invade Ukraine in order to put down uh, a regime that they have such as, such as the one that they with these type of threats. Um, also, we have in another article here, you, Ukraine may create a, a nuclear bomb in 10, 10 years, uh, the experts say. Russia still has not received an official request from the Northern Atlantic Treaty Organization, that is NATO, Concerning a resumption of control over military activities, Russian's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said on Wednesday, um, if, if, if NATO made an official request, uh, we, being Russia, would consider it. Lavrov said in an interview with three radio stations, uh, Eko uh, Moshkavi, uh, Sputnik of Govrit Moskov, there was no official request as of yet, and the issue remains to be at the level of talks. Russia... Uh, and the U.S.-led NATO have been a long dispute over U.S. missile shield plans in Europe, which the United States said was aimed to def uh, defend its allies from possible missile threats emerging from Iran and North Korea. Russia viewed the deployment of missile shields near its border as a threat to its measures to counter the U.S. proposed missile defense system in Europe. Uh, the measures particularly included the construction of a new air defense radar system and deployment of uh, Iskander missiles in Russia's Kaliningrad region, which borders on Europe. Uh, no cheerful prospects in the western direction. Lavrov expressed concerns on Wednesday about the increase, uh, increase in NATO exercises near Russia, Russia's borders and no change in U.S. plans to deploy missile shields in Europe. Speaking about the threats for Russia, Lavrov said the western direction is the U.S. and NATO, there is little cheerful, cheerful here. We used to have good uh, mechanism of cooperation with NATO, but both the military and political issues, he states, uh, the fight against terrorism, drug trafficking, training police personnel, including Afghanistan, but all this was suspended all of a sudden. Uh, all the formats of communication submit some uh, minstrel meetings, of many meetings of the experts, everything was broken off, Lavrov said in an interview with three radio stations, um, as, as, he, as he goes on to explain that. Uh, it's just really alarming to see the things that are building up here. It's very obvious that a war is more than likely inevitable in the very coming months, um, uh, possibly even this summer unless something turns around. If one of the two are gonna to have to back down. If NATO doesn't back down, um, then we're gonna see an all out war with, with, just with, without question. Uh, we're seeing that uh, the new Ukrainian government is very bent on uh, killing all the Russian people in the Far East, as well as wanting to take Crimea back. Russia's not gonna back down from this. It's a very important strategic uh, area for them. They have long had a naval fleet uh, in the Black Sea, and it doesn't look like NATO is going to back down either, uh, especially the United States. It's one country that the Vatican can be assured that will do whatever they ask it to do. Uh, and speaking of that, flying back from Rome, uh, we had uh, several jets very close coming in, uh, proximity uh, appearing to be what would be a fighter jet uh, flying right under the airliner that we were in, much closer than what the typical norm is that you see planes flying by you. So we know there's things still going on uh, all throughout the region there, 
And, um, and secondly, also, one of the guides there himself actually stated right before us in Vatican City that Rome, the two keys, and we've always reported on this, represent both spiritual and um, uh, temporal powers. That, that's what that represents, that, that the Vatican is the ruler of the entire world, and they exercise rule both in spiritual and temporal, which is the political spectrum of this, of the entire world, and that the world should be subject to them. That was said in Vatican City. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.